much. It's it's the usual Thursday, right? Yeah. Usual Thursday. Good. I feel. I will tell you this. A uh, little better Wednesday than than uh, we did a week ago. Uh, beautiful day today for our walkthrough, and and so we've had a really good week of preparation. I think our guys are excited. Um, I feel feel really good in our plan, but we have to. Uh, to execute on Saturday, and we got to get a lot of mental work done in the next couple of days. The Ben's tweeted at the beginning of the week that this was the biggest game since Florida 2018. How do you do that balance between you know, letting your players know that it's an important game, but not overhyping it to where they think about it? Well, for us, it's been it's we have the exact same approach every week. But there's a message every week that doesn't mean they listen to me. Every week. You know what I mean? That doesn't mean it, you know. I'll be the first to admit, you know that. Certain games, like I tell you, you know, in a 12-game season, you're not always going to peak. You're not always going to play your best. You've got to be good enough to win when you're not at your best. But that's no excuse. You know, we only get guaranteed 12 opportunities. So we have to make the most of it. And I know that's easy to say, but these are college kids. They go through ups and downs. They have a ton of things on their plate. And you don't always play your best. Um, but that's on me to get them ready and get them prepared. But our... our our tempo of things is always the same. No one game is more important than the others. The atmosphere, the, 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 the noise behind it, it's impossible to act like you can ignore that sometimes. But if you want to play in big games, you got to take care of the one that's in front of you. So if we, if we want a big game, then we have to play well this week and, and so on. You know, and that, that, that's just the truth. You don't play in big games unless you take care of people that's right in front of you. And so our message really doesn't change. I don't. You know, um, you know, I want to make sure our guys are, are ready to play each and every week. And uh, again, that's that's not always the easiest thing to do is to motivate them every single day to prepare and to, and to have that kind of energy and juice. I know it's easy for, for fans and media to say, well, what the heck, you know, but, but it doesn't just happen. You don't just show up. You've heard me talk about that a lot. You don't just show up on Saturday and think, oh, I'm going to turn it on. You know, you have to have that every day. Some of the offensive linemen have talked about just how much stress uh, Eric Wolford puts on them during practice. What, what does that look like? How, how he tries to get them prepared for Saturdays? It, it's definitely, um, you know, like I told you last week, I, I was I was pleased with our um, conditioning, you know, and that's a big part of it with the offensive line and defensive lines. And, and uh, but uh, definitely he pushes those guys, and uh, it, it's the type of intensity that you're looking for. I mean, you cross the board. We want to put pressure on these guys through the week so the games are much easier. I know you mentioned earlier, too, about some guys re responding and not everybody's going to play great every week. Smoke was one of those guys. You know, he, he's hoping to have a big year, kind of struggle. How do you see him respond throughout the week? Of practice? Oh, he'll, he'll respond just fine. I mean, you, you know, it's it's unacceptable to put the ball on the ground, but it happens, and uh, he'll get it corrected. And, had a really good week of preparation, and so we, we anticipate he'll have a good day. There's a couple times out there on defense. I mean, I know especially one of those reverses where Square was almost there uh, before the, the ball even got there. Just what are some of the ways that you see the, the, the leadership really taking over on defense? Well, I think the experience matters in those situations. You know, that, that's one thing with some of those guys like DeAndre, who you, you mentioned, and other guys. I mean, we're going to see a lot of uh, deception Saturday as well, you know, when we see it from our offense and, um, you know, Missouri does a nice job of, of, of trying to slow you down with some misdirection and some trick plays and things like that. They, they saw on film, I mean, you know, we played fast last week. So one way people are going to try to use that to their advantage is do some things with some misdirections, reverses, some trick plays, things of that nature to try to slow you down. The good news is, is you know, hopefully our players have seen a lot of things. They, they may have something totally different, but just apply your rules, and uh, and that's the that that helps with experience. It looks like you know, some of the nil stuff is trickling out for guys, or at least you know we're kind of getting more aware of it. Is that you know? I know you've talked about that not want to be distracted. Is that you think that's been pretty balanced? How that looks? I, I feel good about it. I mean, I really do. I don't I don't feel like it's been a distraction at all. Um, you know, these guys have some free time and. You know, I mean, after a game, I'd rather have them sitting there signing autographs than out having a few beers. You know what I mean? So it uh, um, doesn't appear to be a, a, a distraction right now. And, and, you know, some of the guys that are doing that are, are, are you know, very mature and, and handle their business. So 
Um, you know, I hope it stays that way. I can't guarantee it, but right now I feel I feel good about where it's at. Well, you've seen some of the, you know, I know you can't comment about specific individuals in the hospital, mm -hmm. but some of the money you get thrown around. It, I mean, I mean, just how? I mean, you know, it's going to be important, but do you kind of expect, I guess, that kind of support here? Like, do you think that's going to happen? Without question, it better if we want to continue, uh, you know, to, to operate and continue to build this program. I don't know what I'm allowed to say and not allowed to say, but I mean, that, that, that's, I mean, we're stating the obvious if we don't, you know what I mean? So I don't know. I better, I better just stop, but you, you guys put that out there. <laughs> I think you all know the importance of it. You know? I, I think you can speak more candidly though, how having three guys play tonight might help trickle down yeah. not only on your team now, but future players. Well, I just think it helps, you know, we're just so proud of them. It's a Thursday night. So it's, it's a early night for our players and, uh, our coaching staff gets out of here at a, at a reasonable hour on Thursday so we could all enjoy it and watch it and we'll be proud to watch those guys and all of them you know so it would be a it, it's fun what, what, what does it just say about your program that all the guys who got drafted made the 53 well, man well that, that that to me says a lot you know I'm, I'm very proud of that and that's a that's a strong statistic that I don't think we talk enough about you know and and uh, to have six guys make it and have five defensive players make it you know leave our, our defense and, and make our 53-man roster in six total, six for six, along with A.J. being a free agent and making the practice squad, which I assume will move up eventually. Um, just says a lot about them. It says a lot about our strength and conditioning team and, and our coaching staff. And You know we talk a lot about developing players, but uh, to have them prepared and NFL ready is a big deal for us, and it, and it makes us all very proud. Um, just look at the guys that are – what was that group with Lonnie and Mike and then and Josh sophomore class? I guess last year was their second year and they all had big years and are doing really well. So we're proud of all those guys and always root for them. Who, who's your pick, Quentin and Kelvin or no. Mike on the bus? We must stay out of there. They are Super Bowl <laughs> champs. I don't know if I could bet against the champs. You know? So there's a pretty good quarterback on their team. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that's something. I was talking to somebody this summer who covers the Redskins and he was talking about Jamin Davis. And talking to the scouts of the Redskins, they said one of the things that Kentucky's got a reputation for developing players is these guys, they weren't all five-star, four-star recruits. How, how important is that to have that reputation out there, not just for NFL, but for kids that you're recruiting? Well, I think it, it's it's great respect, you know, when, when you have these NFL teams, you know, in here. We've had all, all teams have been through here already. And, um, you know, it says a lot. You know, for our, our guys, just to, just you know, that's a compliment. You know, it's a compliment to our assistant coaches, our strength and conditioning team, and to all those guys. Um, I think it's it's what I want our program to be, and that's hungry. You know, and I want guys, um, you know, never satisfied for where they're at, and hungry, and always trying to get better for themselves. And if they get better for themselves, in turn, they're going to help the program. And so, uh, you know, I just appreciate their work ethic and. and uh, we're going to continue to be that way. The team shared the Chris Oates information again. Why is that important to get that message out? Yeah, I appreciate to get the message out. You know, it's important because Kim and Chris and the family need our help. You know, um, we all um, give and, and have been a, a, a piece of that. But, you know, poor Kim is going through so much. You know, when I, I, I hear and we keep in touch with her and I heard you know, a van that we got that was breaking down. She couldn't even get Chris to rehab sessions. I mean, something's wrong. You know what I mean? We need to all step up and I'll be the first one. And I need to, and I wanted to get in front of the Big Blue Nation and help Kim and help Chris because they deserve it. And our fan base is amazing. Our people are amazing. They just need to know that, that Chris needs the help and Kim needs the help. And they are truly an inspiration. The young man is working his tail off just to talk, just to move certain parts of his body. And Kim is taking care of him and needs to get to the rehab session. So we need everybody's help. And uh, I, I was the first one after talking to her, I keep in touch with her, but we all get consumed in our own business. And I'm like, Kim, I will step up and I will get the Big Blue Nation to step up behind you and help you. So I greatly appreciate it. We're all in this together. and. and and, and I just ask what people can give, you know, whatever that is, you know, but we can't uh, let him drift away and be forgotten. Um, it's just too important and he means too much to us and to this team. And, and I greatly appreciate our fan base. It's bigger than football.
this is life and uh, they're amazing people and uh, we all need to step up and, and that starts with me as well.